Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today, we keep it super basic. No red grass wet palette, not even the red grass handle, and no Kolinsky brushes. We'll keep it super basic. However, we'll be using Vallejo, of course, because I don't want to use those cheap craft paints, and I can't. Also, we're painting this WizKids miniature. This is, in my opinion, the most, well, I mean, the best, like, entry-level uh, model when you want to start and dabble into miniature painting. I'll show you how to thin your paints and basically fundamentals on how to paint miniatures. WizKids Minis are so cheap, they're the perfect models for like starting miniature painting. This channel is supported and partnered by this brand. Prep work is optional. However, since I came from the Gunpla hobby, which is mostly like cleanup and airbrush work, so I'm so used to like cleaning the mold lines and gaps and stuff like that. But we won't really do super clean up here. I just want to remove the very obvious mold lines. This minis come pretty primed. So you don't really have to prime them already. So even if you remove the mold lines, I, I think personally you don't really need to reprime them again. Besides, the PVC plastic of these miniatures are about the same color as the primer. By the way, thin cement won't work on this miniature, so I use super glue to glue it on the base. You need something to hold the model, so I'm using a cork here with blue tack so that I won't be handling the miniature so much while painting. Thinning your paints. Thinning your paints is very, very important. You don't really have to thin it around 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1. 3 parts paint and 1 part water will do. Basically, you're trying to achieve like around a very like milk consistency But I highly recommend if you're painting with light colors like this one the basic flesh tone Like don't thin it too much because the coverage will suffer and Just go for a like a creamy milk consistency and that will do Now, you're a first-time miniature painter, you're about to apply your first paint on your mini. Scary, right? Not really. It's not that scary. Once you thin your paints, even if it's just three parts paint and one part water, nothing can go wrong. Well, nothing can go wrong if you're using good paints because it's it it will be frustrating trust me if you use cheap paints or craft paints or craft paints labeled as hobby paints because it doesn't cover as well and you're learning with like not so good paints and that's not a fun way to learn by the way, it is very important to note that some colors have very, very good coverage. Thus, the two thin coats might not apply. But for this one, for the flesh tone, the basic flesh tone, I applied it in three thin coats. Two thin coats a la Duncan Rhodes is a very good starting point. But in reality, the most important part here is the thinning of paints. You could actually like apply a paint in one heavy coat as long as you properly thin the paint 
it will level down and dry and like end up with a very nice smooth finish. Painting from background to foreground. This is a very like helpful guideline. Not really a rule, there's no rule in art or painting, but it's a very good guideline. This guideline simply means that you should paint, I mean not should, but you could paint the background first, meaning as you've noticed, we painted the skin first because it's at the bottom level of the hierarchy of the elements of the model. Like when you paint the skin, we consider it as the background and then the clothes are on top of the skin. So once you paint the skin, even if you sloppily like painted the skin and you accidentally like paint the other parts of the model like the clothes, the armor or whatsoever, it's easier to correct those mistakes than if you painted the armor first and then the skin. Because once you painted the skin, even if it's sloppy, the elements on top of the skin are simply easier to paint. As you can see here, we're painting the ground because even if we mess it up and painted the boots and stuff like that, it's easier to paint over like the boots after painting the groundwork. So painting the background before the foreground or painting the elements underneath the model or the base of the model before you paint the elements doesn't matter if the element is small like for example the hair it's smaller than the skin you you you're not painting the hair because it's smaller but you're painting it because it's on top of the skin and painting elements that are on top of the other elements we will keep the painting simpler and you kind of follow a certain process that is very easy to follow. Oh, if you're wondering why some modelers or even me, I usually paint over black primer. The main reason for that is basically to create more separation like you're pa you painted the skin over black primer and then you leave like an outline between the skin and the clothes so that you have more definition but we tried to like make this video very basic so we painted over gray primer. Now we paint the metallics or the sword. Metallics are semi-transparent or basically translucent paints. So it's a good practice to paint like a black underpainting first. It may be glossy or not. It doesn't really matter for miniatures. And then you paint the actual metallic paint on top of the black underpaint. Never ever over thin your metallic paints because the metallic pigments will separate with the binder. Three parts metallic paint and one part water is a good starting point but you could add more paint if you find it necessary. Now we are done with the base coat. Make sure to wash your brushes really well after painting with the metallics. Also, replace your water. You don't want glitters all over your model if you don't change your water. If you're a long-time subscriber, I'm pretty no, it's, it's very obvious that I love my inks over washes because they're more saturated and I just love working with inks. You see in the video, I have like two parts water, I uh, know, two parts wash and one part water. I thinned one of the dish, one of the like hole in the mixing dish 
has a thin wash and it was too subtle so I don't really recommend it but it's a good way to like dip your toes so that you know the coverage of the wash or the paint before you like paint it unthinned now we're applying the flesh wash all over the model unthinned without water and stuff like that but make sure to apply it all over the model especially all over the skin parts so that you won't produce coffee stain another simple trick to avoid coffee stains is to wet the whole model before you do the washes so that once you apply the washes they will they will the edges will kind of blend because of the wet model now we apply the umber wash this is darker than the sepia wash but it is like has less color it's like a mixture of sepia and black wash so again we wanted this painting video to be very basic so i kind of showed you that even applying the wash like this very liberally you'll produce a good finish another quick tip do not use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process if you apply the washes as much as this you could see in the video just let it air dry As much as I want to say to avoid pulling of the washes, as you gain experience with using washes, sometimes you really like those pulling once in a while. Now we let this air dry for a few minutes and we're done. That's it Pansit, we're done. It's super basic, super easy. After the washes have dried in around 10 minutes, we have a really nice couple of minis that we painted in like maybe less than an hour. Now this is good tabletop ready like quality painting, but we're going to push the painting into golden lemon standard. Now we use the wet palette, a couple of Kolinsky brushes, and apply more glazes, layering, and highlighting. I did not record on video like the painting of the Golden Lemon Standard. I do have a lot of videos on wet blending, glaring, glazing, like highlighting, recess painting, and all those techniques and i wanted this video to be really really basic and hopefully you will paint your first miniature after watching this video i really really hope if you're a first time painter miniature painter and you haven't painted a mini yet after watching this video you have like you gain the courage to paint your first mini I fully understand if you're a first time painter and you find it intimidating because you see like final results and like if you watch videos of experts, it's like a lot of sped up glazing and glaring and layering and stuff like that. So hopefully, I really, really hope that after watching this video, you realize that miniature painting is super easy. Oh, and lastly, forget freaking standards. There's no standard in art. That's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!